This may be a kid's list of the best things to do in London, but honestly, so many of these options are great for adults too. Trust me, I know. I went on all of the adventures. Not only will we highlight 13 of the best things to do in London with kids, we'll tell you what to avoid too. At the end, we'll also give some honorable mentions for activities we haven't done but are well regarded by friends and others. Let's dive in. First up is parks. London has incredible parks. Locals really value their green spaces. I'm going to highlight just two parks in particular, but you can devote an entire video series on these. Hyde Park, specifically the Serpentine, lake in the middle of the park where there's a great bar and kitchen right on the water, good spot for lunch and a bathroom break if needed. Second is Regent's Park, which is probably my favorite overall park in London. Want to give a shout out though too to Weaver's Fields, which was near our hotel. Great soccer pitch or football pitch. One of the best parts of Regent's Park is that it includes the London Zoo. This is a full zoo filled with giraffes, all sorts of animals, right in central London. And what better way to spend your time after the zoo than with a stroll through Regent's Park or up to Primrose huh? Hill. You might be wondering how you should get around London with kids or just at all. There's the tube, of course, the double-decker buses, but if you have a smaller child as we did under the age of two, nothing beats a black cab. Yes, you'll pay more, but the convenience of being able to place your full stroller in the back without having to fold it up is amazing. New York City, take notes. One of my favorite parts of London is its bookstores, truly one of the greatest literary cities in the world. From Waterstones to Daunt, we tried as many as possible that would let our strollers squeeze through its doors. Baby Sebastian loved them, especially any Peppa Pig book. Number five is the London Transport Museum. We did an entire video on this, so make sure you check that out in the description link below. It's a must for any transportation enthusiast. Number six is the Natural History Museum. The best part of this is that it's free, but that also means that the lines can get extremely long, so make sure to come early. The dinosaurs, other creatures are sure to amaze both kids and adults alike. This is the hippo, Sebastian. Look how scary this guy is. Look at those teeth. Number seven is the Tower Bridge and Tower of London. Start off by walking along the south bank of the Thames, approaching on, the Tower Sebastian. of London from the Tower Bridge. Awesome. Many people confuse this bridge with London Bridge, which is further west, but this bridge gives you one of the best vantage points of the entire city, and it's so much fun to walk across, especially on a nice day, as we had. Sebastian, hey, this way. No, wrong way. Right next to the Tower Bridge is the notorious Tower of London where they killed people. Nice little walking path here, right on the river. And that's where we came from, way over there. Number eight is afternoon tea. This is an expensive but awesome activity with kids. Provided the venue is accommodating, most are good, but some like Rosewood are simply great. They have a little explorer's kids menu. Not all of them have kids menu, so make sure to check in advance. Our son loved it. Check the link video in the description where we did a full video on our afternoon tea experience comparing three different of our favorite teas. If you're looking for a great place for breakfast with incredible views of London, I highly recommend Duck and Waffle. It's one of my favorite restaurants in London. It's a little pricey. Right, if you go classic. early, it's very family friendly. For the adult partiers, you can enjoy late night drinks Patriots, until early morning hours. Drinks, you think, and if you stay until closing, you might stumble over a couple strollers going in for breakfast. Some of the best views of the city can be had here. Come early to watch the sunrise while enjoying duck and waffles. Number 10 on the list is Borough Market. Babies love Borough Market and adults do too. And it's easy to see why. 
come early here though as well because it gets crowded. Some of the best local purveyors have stands here. In addition to culinary delights from all over the world, eat a light breakfast, come here to feast for an early lunch like we did. I highly recommend this place for their sandwiches, the black pig. The pulled pork that they serve on a ciabatta roll is to die for. That's Parmesan spread across the top. Another great market is Camden Market. Also recommend coming early here because it can get really crowded, especially on the weekends. The walk along the canals heading into Camden Market is truly unique. It's great for kids, although be careful if you get a busy walking path. You don't want anyone following the canal either. But the scenery with all the boats is amazing. Once you actually get into the market itself, there are tons of vintage, interesting shopping, culinary options. It's truly fantastic. Nirvana. Oh no. It's too bad Sebastian's asleep for this guy. Yep. We're still out over here. We did a full video that's also linked in the description here on Battersea. It's a truly unique shopping adventure. That's why it's coming in here at number 12. Relatively new development but I couldn't recommend it more, especially if you have kids. There are playgrounds, a waterfront park along the Thames, and a giant indoor shopping area that is perfect for a rainy London day. Great restaurant and other food options as well. Finally, last but not least, is Spitalfields, an indoor artisan shopping market in Shoreditch. It's historic, fun, lots of local artists, artisans, and purveyors offering some of the best things London has to offer. Great shopping, great food, definitely check it out. Now let's talk about what to avoid. Anything in Leicester Square. Seriously, why would anyone wait in this massive line for a Lego store or the next door M&M store or this McDonald's? Also avoid any pub after 4 p.m. on a weekday or any busy restaurants. They're just not fun with kids. And specifically, I wouldn't recommend the popular restaurant Deschum with kids. They don't take reservations. You're often sitting around in a very loud, crowded place for a long time. They will often try to accommodate you, but they're just better options with kids. Now let's talk about where to stay. If you're traveling with kids, I recommend trying to find a hotel with a pool. We stayed at the Pan Pacific. It's a little on the pricier side though, but their pool is an infinity edge pool overlooking the city of London. It's really fantastic. And when it does rain, which it probably will during your stay, there's nothing better than being able to escape into the pool. We'll now hit some honorable mention kids activities that I haven't personally done but have heard good things about. Thanks for watching. Please hit that like and subscribe and we'll see you again soon. London yeah. Yeah.